Hey tubers, welcome back for another adventure. So, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about buy starters. These things started to show up on Honda um, scooters back in the 80s. And what their, their job to do is to duplicate a choke. A choke works by, you know, you close a butterfly and it sucks more gas through the car because it can't suck air, right? So it uses the vacuum to actually pull more gas through the carb. And when you open it up at all, you, you know, you get more airflow, leans out your mixture, better when your engine's warm, obviously. What this thing does, and hopefully I'm showing it to you, yeah, um, what this thing does is when the carburetor is cold, notice I'm saying cold, there's a valve opened here. When that valve is opened, it allows extra gas to flow through the carb. So instead of restricting the airflow, which now pulls gas through the carb, you have the same airflow, but there's more gas available because passages are opened when it's cold. Now, the way this thing works is Obviously, when it's cold, extra passages open, more gas flow, your mixture's richer, and the thing will run as it should when, um, when the engine's cold. Gradually, as it heats up, the valve closes, which leans out the mixture, and you're back to running, as one says, uh, you, you know, normally, right? Most of the time when you ride your motorcycle around, um, your engine's warm and your, your mixture's a bit leaner for that. Now, the way this thing works, if you actually break it open and check it out, is, once again, when it's cold, there's a little valve in here, and I'll actually show it to you. There's a little valve in here that's open. There's a little cover and you take two screws out and it shows it right to you so I just want to make sure I'm showing it to you and I am now as electricity goes through a little heater in here it actually expands wax and it actually pushes this valve down which makes it close in the seat, which once again restricts a certain amount of gas flow through circuits in there until finally it closes it off and then you're running in your, your warm mixture. Um, the way this is powered is the yellow wire, and let me make sure I'm showing these two to you. Yep. Yeah. You can see the yellow wire goes to one of the um, stator windings. So there's about 25 volts AC being put on this. This ground wire goes to this 10 ohm resistor and then the other side of the resistor goes to ground. So there's about 25 volts AC through a dropping resistor that goes through this and um, I measured a few of these right I had a couple of them floating around. Uh, for resistance I get anywhere between um, 20 2 and 32 ohms, so call it somewhere between 20 and 35 ohms. So you'll see this resistor actually um, drops quite a bit of the power, right? It, it, a full third of it, give or take a little bit, a third to a quarter of the power is dropped across this resistor. That's why it's made out of ceramic, power resistor or heat seek seeking resistor, ceramic resistor, whatever you want to call it. By the way, this is 10 ohms, 10%. So, um, you start your bike up, it's cold. Once again, this thing is pulled all the way out. Your mixture is rich. Gradually, as it warms up, this thing expands and, and eventually seats and shuts the valve down. Cool things about it is, let's say you start up, you have a bike you're troubleshooting and you don't have all the electrical circuits worked out yet, very common, I might add, or your resistor is bad, or any of those type of things, your bike will start. So that's good. 
and you will figure out you have a problem as it's warming up and I'm going to use the word the choke does not come off the mixture does not lean out so to speak as it's warming up you'll begin to get that thud 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 a little bit of black smoke and so forth so you'll know you're running rich and after watching this video you'll know that for some reason your choke isn't isn't turning off let's say it's super super cold outside well then it's going to take longer for the choke to turn off which is a great thing because you're going to need the choke longer to warm the thing up and actually get it to run properly for those temperature conditions let's say it's super hot outside well that means that choke is going to turn off quicker which once again when it's hot you would want that to happen so it's actually quite ingenious um what could go wrong with these things this is an example of one where things went wrong um, this guy here I checked it it was an open circuit so the heater appears to be opened that's first of all second of all it appeared to be seized and I really had to work it to take it apart and you could see it looks like it kind of uh, the wax might have leaked out of it and so forth this one appears to be done so interesting to look at of no value other than the screws and the other hardware should I drop on when I'm putting this one back together again um, how to test them just a quick and dirty test unplug the cable um, do a quick ohm meter check and you should get somewhere between 20 and 35 ohms that indicates your heaters working doesn't mean that it's mechanically opening and closing and so forth doesn't mean it's not stuck but it means that the resistance in your heater is good so that's that's checking this thing um, what I would do also is if it's not working I would check it on the other side of this connector which is the stator side of this connector I would um, do a quick check across here and you would probably see given that this is like infinite resistance opened um, you would probably see um, all at 25 30 volts on this AC um, you should see somewhere around 30 volts if you're not quite sure you, you know that just kind of gives you a go no go I would probably also test it with you know perhaps a um, you know 30 watts worth or um, 100 watt resistive light bulb and see if you get a little bit of a glow you know something like a 100 watt light bulb just put it across there and see if you get a little glow on it and once again that's between the stator um, going through the resistor to ground assuming they're both there and it's doing that um, your your by starter valve of, or assembly um, might be hung up or bad you take it apart very gently because obviously this wouldn't come apart when I forced it I broke it but take it apart and assuming everything is good you can buy these they're pretty cheap um, or you could buy quite honestly a whole carburetor for 25 bucks and not have to deal with any of this stuff um, you could clean this up very gently you know don't move it around too much you don't want to break things make sure the needles clean make sure in there the seat and all that's clean this comes off so you can easily take it apart spray it out clean it make sure um, that you know it could move freely it's hard to tell if it's moving freely there are some videos of actually putting power to this thing and testing it that way there's one guy who um, claims he read a manual and he says if you put 12 volts DC to this um, that's how they say to test it and you can see how much this moves it should actually move out just a little bit um, from his video and from some other reading I did this doesn't move all that much it's not like you know growing a foot or anything I mean it, it's moving in the eighth and sixteenth of an inch ranges so um, doesn't doesn't move much so don't you, you know I mean it's it's very very small I guess you can take your calipers you know once again put it on there then you know run your 12 volts and heat it up and see what it does um, when you're running this normally it's 25 to 30 30 volts AC 
and it's going through a dropping resistor. Um, once again, he indicated that the manual said 12 volts, um, just put it to it and everything's good. Um, I would probably have a tendency to come up with some kind of dropping resistance on it. Um, you know, 12 volts unlimited to this. You don't, you don't want to cook the heater while you're trying to test it. I would, I would probably recommend um, doing it with the, with the resistor, even though you're only using 12 volts. I would stop, probably still put the resistor in series with the whole thing. Just it'll take longer to warm up and make maximum length. So that's the bi starter valve, and this is the dropping resistor. And once again, it runs off of one leg of the stator, which which I thought was interesting. Um, can these be bypassed? The answer is on one of the scooter forms. They showed a, a little thing that you you actually put in the same place. Um, but before you bypass it, make sure you could get to it to move that little <laughs> thing on the scooter form. I think they were selling it for somewhere 16 to 20 bucks. I don't know if there was a postage called somewhere around 20 bucks. That's the only thing I saw. I didn't see anybody um, put together a video on how to bypass this. Um, if you take this apart and you realize you got to do a couple of things, you got to slide that valve I showed you in and out, and you have to make sure you have a vacuum seal over the top of it. So not only do you have to move that plunger in and out, depending on if you want to richen or lean the mixture, but you have to do it in such a way that you're not allowing vacuum into this circuit and messing the whole world up. So, um, once again, I saw something on a scooter forum. I, I didn't see any, you know, quick and easy hacks that, boy, this is how you do it. Um, should you have a scooter, a GY6, whether it's the 50, um, 150 or 200 cc version it should you have one of them not start that easy a lot of people go after these right away um, it's probably not that there's a manifold that these things bolt to right there hopefully I'm showing it to you and a lot of times those manifolds crack or there's a hose that goes into them that does various things from air pollution to uh, to turning your fuel on and off and, and so forth. Um, so it might be your intake manifold. If it won't start because of a lean condition, you know, you give it a little hoot of starting fluid. Next thing you know, it's running, um, but it won't start on its own. Um, once again, start looking at a cracked manifold before you fool around with your buy starter valve too much. Um, it's actually very, very clever. Um, first time I've ever seen anybody use anything like this was on a heating system where they actually um, run power to um, a wax-like cylinder in a valve. And when the that wax-like cylinder expands, it opens a valve which allows heating water to, to go through and when you turn off the power it, it contracts which closes the valve you might say yeah but now you have hot water going through the valve that's going to heat it up well you kind of isolate the wax thing off to the side and you make sure there's plenty of airflow so that um, it's not heated by the water going through the valve so that's the first time ever I've ever seen it and seeing it here is actually um, kind of clever um, this is the only one that I had go bad, and this was in a box of other stuff, so God knows what else was done to it. So once again, the way to wire it up, should you buy stuff like I do with the wires all torn up, um, hopefully I'm showing this to you, you start with 25 volts AC, which is your stator, you go through the you know, by starter valve, you go through the resistor and back to ground. Obviously, one side of your stator is already hooked to ground, 25 volts. Once again, by starter, resistor, and ground, which gives you a full loop. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to ask. I hope this um, 
this answered any any curiosities you may have um i always looked at this thing and i said to myself boy i got no power to it why is it running rich because i always thought of this more as like a starting solenoid right you put power to it you open a valve which to me would rich in the mixture um but it actually uses that hot wax that way it's a slow transition between um enriched and um, lean once you're warmed up. Once again, I hope this helps. Please remember, feet down, heads up, and make sure you get out there and enjoy each and every day. Uh, bye now.